Big debt? No problem. Welcome to Common Sense on the Prairie, a podcast dedicated to helping you demystify the sometimes complex topic of money. I'm Adam Cox, head of wealth management for the First National Bank in Sioux Falls. We're a community bank based out of South Dakota. In this podcast, we share expert insights from around the country and stories from our local community to arm you with the tools you need to make better financial decisions. Because the truth is, the more we talk about this stuff, the better off we're all going to be. Speaking from experience, having a huge amount of debt can be daunting, even debilitating at times. But it doesn't have to be fatal. With a solid plan, unwavering commitment, and some hard work, large debts can be overcome. And when those debts have been put in the rearview mirror, the financial habits you put in place to conquer that debt can continue to transform your financial lives and catapult you to a financial success story. Diane and I have shared our student loan story in the show, walking you through what we went through to put that debt behind us. But today, I've got another incredible story to share with you. My good friends, Eric and Larissa Ferendorf, are currently climbing their own student loan debt mountain and have gone to some incredible lengths to put themselves in a position of financial strength. I've been so inspired by their journey, and I think you will be too. There are lots of great takeaways from this conversation. Maybe you don't have a huge student loan. Maybe your challenge is saving for a new house or saving for retirement. I think Eric and Larissa's story will inspire you to help make the changes necessary for you to tackle your own financial mountain. I hope you enjoy the episode. All right, guys. Welcome to the show. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us on our main voyage here. Yeah. All right. Well, (laughs) let's break the ice a little bit. You know me. Uh, we go way back. I like talking about music. I'm a big music fan. So let's start here. What, uh, what kind of music are you into? Larissa, you can start. Um, I'd say country. Country. Yep, good answer. That's my favorite. Good. Eric. I'm a 90s country <laughs> and an 80s rock and roll kind of guy. <laughs> okay. All right. Either cowboy boots or mullets. Yeah. <laughs> or both. Or both. Yeah. 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 Even yeah. better, both. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you and I went to a concert in high school together, didn't we, with Steve Miller Band? You got it. Yeah. Do you remember the guy standing next to me in like all denim, head to toe, smoking pot like it was his job? <sighs> I think there was more than one of those yeah. people at that concert. That'd be hard <laughs> yeah. to narrow it down there. But Yeah, uh, that guy looked like he'd been at every Steve Miller Band concert. <laughs> circa late 1990s. Yeah, late 1990s. Yep. Sioux Falls Arena. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. All right. And let's get a little embarrassing here. Uh, you can start this time, Eric. What's your most embarrassing album you've ever owned? Most embarrassing album I've ever yeah. owned probably is Elton John Love Songs, <laughs> which Larissa's probably very surprised they even own a Love Songs album. That's awesome. <laughs> I think that is my most embarrassing one. My least embarrassing one or my best one is still with the Garth Brooks double oh, live album. Sure, yeah, yeah. It never gets old. Way to shift the focus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> How about you, Larissa? Um, you know what? It was just too cool. Yeah? I, I really oh. don't have anything too embarrassing. Good, oh, good for you. No, no. Good. I'm into musicals, so probably probably something in that realm of okay. things. But All right. But 18s. Nothing crazy. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's not embarrassing. Yeah. But <laughs> This for me. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Well, mine, uh, just, you know, be authentic, whatever. Um, mine would be easily Celine Dion's greatest hits. Mm, yeah. To be fair, I didn't buy it. Maybe it's worse. I like took it from my dad and never gave it back to him. <laughs> that probably so, is worse. Yeah, I think that's probably worse. <laughs> so good. I look forward to all the heck I'll get about that. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's talk financial planning. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a financial planning podcast after all. Um, let's start with some... Questions, some issues that every couple has to deal with. So first question for you, how do you guys split up financial responsibilities? In our household, Larissa sets the budget. Okay. uh, And uh, sets the the aerial big plan. Okay. And then uh, I pretty much just put my head down and execute it. Okay. And uh, largely, I report back the progress. Okay. She has no. no idea about the progress unless I report it back to her. Sure. Right. Okay. All right. So you set it. Yep. You do it. He, yep. Okay. Implements it, tracks it, does yeah. the, yeah, balancing oh, the, checkbook balance the checkbook and the bills okay. and all that sure. kind of stuff. Uh, yeah. Sure. Uh, paper and pencil. Okay. So that's how you track spending? Yes. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Old school. Old school. Yeah. Old school. Mm-hmm. I like it. Do you have separate or combined accounts? Um, our plan is to have joined, <laughs> but um, currently at this point, his technically is joint. Okay. I, I joined his, <laughs> but since we got married a year ago, but I still have my separate account okay. that 
eventually all close, but sure. as of right now, it's still there. Well, or slush it's, fund. It's only so. been a year. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Exactly. You want to make, it's still new. You yep. make sure this yep. is going to work exactly. out. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> she can touch all of the money in my account or yeah. our account, yeah. but yeah. I can't touch hers. Well, that's smart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's smart. Is there one of you that likes to spend more money freely than the other? Um, I would say not really. I would say we're both on the saving side of things, which probably makes it easier. Yeah, like that. Well, for sure. All right, let's talk about debt. So one of the reasons why I wanted to have you guys on the show is because, you know, like Diane and I, you have a big student loan debt. Mm-hmm. And um, I've got to see your story firsthand and have been really inspired by it. I think it's an awesome uh, story to tell. And so let's start at the beginning a little bit. You guys met while you were in chiropractic school, which mm-hmm. I've learned later is not cheap. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. how much total debt did you guys finish the program with? And you weren't married at the time, so right. separate debt, yep. right? Yep. Mine, I ended up with 130000 Okay. And I had 230000 You're an overachiever. <laughs> <laughs> Major overachiever. <laughs> Good. When did it hit you how much that debt was going to impact your lives after school? I always knew what the debt meant and where I was at, but when your income is really slow to increase early on in your career, you Mm kind of like put that in the back of your mind and choose to kind of just not focus on it because it kind of can just get you down. Yeah. Um, But uh, when Larissa had her emotional breakdown on me when we were going to go have a, a very uh, enjoyable cross-country ski afternoon together. And before yeah. we can get our boots on, she absolutely loses it. <laughs> I had to face it face-to-face right there. There yeah. was no getting around it anymore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What kind of emotions is that? So you said it was kind of a breakdown. What kind of emotions yeah. were you feeling about the debt? Yeah. So at this point, I was pretty close to getting mine paid off. Okay. So I had... I don't know, 20 or 40,000 left at this point. Yeah. So I was working hard, getting kind of my part of it. I got taken care of. And um, as Eric had said, his income was a lot slower to grow at first. Yeah. And so at this point, it was still pretty much just accruing versus paying anything down. Yeah. And so at this point, I was like, I don't think I can do this. Yeah. You know, you're making little to no money. You're not paying anything back like this. It's, it's too much to handle. Yeah. It's too, too yeah. much. Yeah. So, yeah. So yeah, he got the brunt of it at that point. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Eric, what emotions did that bring up for you? A lot of guilt. Yeah. A lot of burden. Um, a lot of weight just on the shoulders. Yep. Um, and then having your serious girlfriend, soon to be fiance feeling that way, it, it kind of really beat you down a bit. Yep. But it was the best thing that ever happened, I think, at that point in time. Was yeah. We had to take the bull by the horns and not kick the can down the road anymore, yeah. or just ignore it. We yeah. had to take we had to face it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Well that that brings us to the fun part of the story. So this is the part where I um have you know thought about this conversation that I would enjoy the most. Um so let's talk about what you two did to pay down this debt. You're still on the journey. You haven't paid it off yet, Mm -hmm. but um, talk about some of the sacrifices that the two of you have made um, to, to get out in front of this. Mm -hmm. Where do we even begin on that question? I mean, you could talk, you could talk about living in a trailer. (laughs) If I had to point to one thing, (laughs) that's a big one. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big one. And even before the trailer, we both lived with our parents for the first three years out of school. Okay. So you were, however, you know, late thirties. Yep. Yeah. Moving back home with the parents. Which feels good. Doing yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Basement dwellers too. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And just trying to make a living. You yep. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh so but that- more in the short term, yeah, yeah. Eighteen months in a mobile home. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um that when the wind blew, you could see the blinds and the win- window coverings vi- vibrate and move when it was <laughs> when it was blowing. So Mm-hmm. And what's the nickname you had for the, the trailer again? What it's was a it? park model. The park model. Yes, yes. You it makes it, it sound a lot the, better the than model. living in a trailer. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We're or going short, home to the park model. Yeah. Or for sure, yep. we call it the PM. The PM. Yep. <laughs> yep. I like it. Yep. Good. Uh, exactly. So that, 
Um, probably my biggest sacrifice is no cable TV. Yeah. So we stream, which is a real big pain. Yeah. But we're not doing that until debt's taken care of. So okay. that's kind of one of my bigger, um, what do I want to say? Like motivations. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. One of my biggest motivations. I'm trying yeah. to get debt paid off. So we've done that. Well, let's um, talk about the streaming. Usually when it <laughs> buffers or kicks us out. <laughs> Uh, classically, Larissa says, it's your fault why we're still streaming. <laughs> this is all of your fault. It's because of your debt. Which so, helps with the guilt, I'm sure. Right? Oh, yeah. She has no problem throwing the guilt on me because she knows that's my motivator. Oh, yeah, she for knows sure. that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she uses that to her benefit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Get back to work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We need to get this paid off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. yep. But that, I mean, us as a couple or our family, I mean, we don't go out to eat. We mm. don't go out for happy hours. We don't go out for any extra expenses there. Yeah. Shopping um, very little. Right. We pretty right. much wear the same clothes we've worn in the last five years. Yep. Yeah. Yep. But, and so you look very nice. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> thank, you. <laughs> yes. thank you. So has it so, felt like, has it felt like a huge sacrifice? I mean, people might hear this and they think, you know, oh, no shopping, no going out to dinner, you know. I could never do that. No, you know, no cable. Mm-hmm. Has it felt like a huge sacrifice or has it just been like we're on the same page and we're going to just make these short-term sacrifices until we get beyond this? Yeah. More so, more so the latter. Yeah. Um, yeah. Eric and I have talked about multiple times actually that fortunately what we enjoy to do really doesn't cost that much money. Yeah. We enjoy being home. We enjoy spending time with our daughter. Mm-hmm. We enjoy spending time with our extended families um, yeah, pretty much our hobbies right now, I guess, are all relatively free. Sure. So in that aspect of it, we've been fine. We've always had our necessities met. It's basically just all all the extras. Yeah. And being debt free in a year and a half or a little over a year and a half okay. mm-hmm. is yep. is worth it to That's the motivator. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Is worth it to do yeah. what we're currently doing. Yeah. I would say it hurt in the early beginning. Yeah. Like, True. I like happy hours. I like socializing with friends, you know, on nights and weekends. That came to a screeching halt. That hurt at first. Mm. Now, it doesn't hurt so much. It just, it takes a little time to adjust. And I think part of our hobby is working. We enjoy working. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. It's mm-hmm. part of our passion, mm-hmm. um, serving others. And so... When you enjoy working and when you're working a lot, you don't have a lot of time to spend money. No. That's so right. it's a it's a win win. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. right. Well, and that's mm-hmm. why that's why I wanted to have you guys tell the story because, you know, I think a lot of people when they come out of school and they've got debt, especially if it's a large debt, um, you know, you guys have good incomes. So the you know, I guess what most people would do is just kick the can down the road and say, We'll get this paid off eventually and you just start your lifestyle creeps up and, and you mm-hmm. guys haven't done that. You've really buckled down and want to get this behind you, which is, which is incredibly inspiring. Mm-hmm. So it's been fun to watch this journey. Um, all right. So you've got some big short-term goals. How do you balance the short-term goal with your long-term goals? So thinking about retirement, thinking mm-hmm. about kids and college and all those sorts of things. How do you yeah. balance those two? Yeah. So at first when I thought it was going to take us longer than what it, is going to um, paying off the student loans, we were kind of trying to mix and match. So we still uh, maxed out our Roth IRAs every month. So we've done that all the way through. Uh, But once we we sat down and really figured out that we'll have it paid off in 21 months, Mm -hmm. we decided to do a a hold off on any of the extra retirement stuff until after that. Because it is such a short-term goal. Yes, yep, yep. So yep. we decided just really be gazelle intense still, yep. Yep. pay off the debt, and then kind of dig into more of the retirement stuff after. Sure. That wouldn't make sense if you knew this was going to take 10 years. Right. And you couldn't put off yes. retirement savings that long. Yep. Okay. Yep. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And how do you talk about your goals and how you how you're going to reach them? We usually reserve those to happy hours on our sofa sitting at the house talking about <laughs> used to be when we were in the trailer or the park park model when the we PM, were yeah. at the PM, we, we did a lot of dreaming there of saying, uh, when we can get out of this place. Yep. Uh, but you know, I don't think other, our lifestyle isn't going to change much mm-hmm. at all. 
other than significant more retirement contributions yep. Yep. and um and some cable tv yeah <laughs> <laughs> non-streaming yeah. TV. Yeah. Streaming is over the same month yeah. our debt is gone. Yeah. Uh -huh. We will have every channel under yeah. the sun, I'm yeah. sure. I'm pretty positive. Good, good, good. Well, uh, no, that's, yeah, that's, 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 uh, it's so important to have those goals. And sometimes they can seem like the smallest things in the world, but it's like, you, you got to dream. You got to say, mm -hmm. you know, wouldn't it be nice if we can do X when we, we finished getting past this. Otherwise it can be hard to hang in there as long as you guys have had. So mm -hmm. if streaming is what gets you there, right? you know, right. God bless you. <laughs> so financially speaking, what's most important to the two of you at this stage of your lives? Getting out of debt. I yeah. mean, getting that, getting that weight and that burden off our shoulders as quickly as possible. Or, you know, it's kind of like your hair is on fire, yeah. you know, and we have been living the rice and beans, beans and rice. For the last, you know, three years, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, right. Last mm -hmm. year, married, but the first two, we did it individually, but we were tracking and doing it, you know, kind of as a team, but sure. separately. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then proving Larissa and my in-laws wrong. Yeah. You know, that's, <laughs> that's one of my biggest things too. Hey, no judgment here. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I mean, I have to be honest with you. Yeah, hate fuel for the success machine. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. That motivates me every day. Uh huh. But more so paying off the debt so then we can kind of live and give yep. in the near future. Yeah, for yep. sure. So who keeps you two accountable? I would say to a certain extent each other, but more so than a person ever would, more so just the feeling, the, yep. the burden of the debt. Yep. You know, so I would say just that feeling and us wanting to be free of that keeps us more accountable than any person ever could. Sure. I guess when it's largely my debt, yeah, you know, uh, just the pressure of that motivates me and mm -hmm. just, the, just like owning it. It's my responsibility. Mm -hmm. um, while we're doing it together, I feel like I've got to really do it yep. to help our family get out of debt and so we can live and give like no one else. Yeah. Yeah, I had the same exact feelings. You know, Diane didn't bring a dollar of debt into our marriage, and I brought uh, a lot of them, uh, mm -hmm. 220000 mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. And so you better believe I felt like that was my debt, even mm -hmm. though you know, we were married and we were mm -hmm. paying it off together and making the sacrifices together. That was mine. And mm -hmm. I felt really, really good mm -hmm. when I could unload that. Mm -hmm. What would you say is the greatest financial decision you've made? Mine would be achieving my dream of becoming a chiropractor, you yeah. know, uh, which was a goal of mine that I thought about for doing for years. And then probably most importantly, marrying Larissa. Smart man. Yeah. yeah. Without a doubt. That's a great answer. Without a doubt. <laughs> great answer. Yeah. Uh, how mine, about you, Larissa? Mine was also probably marrying him, but more so for the negative financial reasons <laughs> versus positive. Yeah. Um, but I mean, that was probably the biggest, yeah, financial decision I've made. Yeah. It, it was a lot. <laughs> well, we've, and we've talked about this before too, but the habits you create now mm -hmm. that, you know, you're married and you have this big debt that you're trying to get rid of, those habits are going to carry through the rest of your lives, even when you don't mm -hmm. have the debt. So mm -hmm. you've learned to become savers and you've learned to become good budgeters and generous and um, those things will carry on. I can guarantee you I don't, won't go away the month yeah. that you, uh, you pay off that debt. Mm -hmm. What's your best money moment so far? I would say, uh, you know, we closed on our first house yeah. um, three, four weeks ago mm -hmm. to be able to put $50,000 down as a down payment on that house and then still have $100,000 to put down in our student debt come this January of 2022. Yep. Um, and then, I mean, what else have we done? We've, we, we cash flowed two vehicles. We paid for cash from those. Not, mm -hmm. not fancy ones by any means, yep. but mm -hmm. operating, mm -hmm. you know, Reliable. ones that we can rely yeah. on. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. cash wedding. flowing or wedding. Oh, yeah. sure. Having a child. Having a baby. It's a lot of life in there. Yeah. 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 So, but I think our biggest 
our biggest moment is yet to come. Yeah. Our biggest moment mm-hmm. will be 21 months from now. Yeah, yeah. When we give or take, right? Yes, yeah, right, yeah. right. Who's counting? Right. August exactly. of 2023. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I'm yep. counting. Yep. I'm sure yep. counting. <laughs> yeah, yep. um, that I'm sure we'll take the cake once we get there. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. A vacation might have to be weaved into that. Yeah, sure. <laughs> time period. <laughs> well earned thereafter. Mm-hmm. Well earned. Mm-hmm. All right. So, what's your worst money moment? Made the breakdown Mine, in the park. Yeah, yeah, I was just saying, <laughs> yep, yep, for sure. For, for I, I know sure. That's that his. meltdown. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, this was probably on the receiving end of that. Yeah, yeah. definitely yeah. on the receiving end yeah. of Larissa's meltdown. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Without a doubt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it was the best thing, too. Yeah. Best sure. and worst all at the same time. Sure. So you're not big spenders, but when you think about spending, do you prefer to spend on things or on experiences? Probably more on the experience side of things, I would say. I mean, when we do buy things, we do buy nicer things. Like we want to buy quality things. But yeah, we're kind of into concerts and that type of thing. So I would say probably more experiences. We used to be into concerts. (laughs) Before when we weren't as good with our money. Yeah, Yeah. maybe someday we'll be into concerts again. But uh what's the last one we went to? Garth Brooks when he was? Yeah. Yeah, back in school probably. Yeah. Whatever. So. When he was in Sioux Falls? He was. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was the last time. I've seen him five times, but yeah. Sure. I'm the fifth time. I haven't seen him since then. <laughs> yeah. But sure. Yeah. We yeah, buy nice both things. neither at the same time. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I think, I think Diane and I agreed. We buy things, but we aspire mm-hmm. to go with experiences. Mm-hmm. We're just too boring. Yeah. <laughs> um, Speaking to two of the same kind <laughs> yeah, of right. people. Yeah. Last question for you. What money advice would you give to your younger selves? I think to start being gazelle intense, even while in school. Like when we're in school, we were kind of talking about that. It just kind of feels like monopoly money Mm -hmm. at that point. You know, it's, it's not even ours to begin with type of thing. I mean, we still didn't do anything too crazy, but you know, we went to some concerts, we'd go to happy hour. We would do kind of all those things, not really realizing, you know, how yep. much it would impact us in the future. Yep. Felt like house money. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. 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 That's exactly what it was. It just, it didn't, so. it, it didn't have a lot of value because we weren't producing value to get it right. Sure. Except for sitting in a lecture hall, listening to lectures and labs and taking exams. But yep. being a little bit more intentional about a budget early on and thinking about every dollar that you borrow, then it it needs to be paid back with interest down the road. And so that I think is our biggest regret. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I wish that we could Mm -hmm. have done things differently. We still didn't take out any grad plus loans. We didn't do any of that stuff. Okay. Um, But we could have done more. Mm-hmm. Don't we all feel that way? Yeah, that's mm-hmm. true. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thanks. Appreciate you being on the show. Thanks for sharing your story. And I hope uh, everybody gets as inspired about it as I have. So appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks for, for the having opportunity us. to be yep, here. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Appreciate it. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please subscribe and share with your family or friends. If you have a topic you want us to cover in future episodes, send us a note through our website. And if you're at the point where you want an expert opinion on your finances, reach out and we'd be happy to start a conversation. And remember, any comments, insights, or strategies discussed on this podcast are intended to be general in nature and therefore may not be suitable for you and your situation, whatever that may be. Before acting on anything we discuss, please consult with your attorney, CPA, and or your financial advisor.